Hello and welcome to episode 42 of the Breaking Yarn podcast. My name is Michaeli. I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico, and this is my podcast where I talk about my knitting, my crocheting, and my yarn dyeing. You can find me online at breakingyarn.com or anywhere on social media at Breaking Yarn. Today I have a bunch of whips. Um, I guess I got some castanitis, castanitis, castanitis. <laughs> oh well, I cast it on a lot of things, um, and I have one acquisition, and I will give an update on the um, breaking yarn fall muscle madness cow that's happening right now on Instagram. Okay, so let's just start with my whips since that's all I have. This one I showed last time. This is the Bean and Olive sweater. I am knitting this for my almost three-year-old for her birthday. And um, the main color is actually from Knit Picks, and it's a Swish DK. And the color is Dove Heather. And then the contrasting colors are all from my shop. So we have Marie Schrader's The Purple. The yellow is Hazmat Suit. The pink is Pink Teddy Bear. And the blue is Crystal Meth. And then on the one's completed sleeve, I did the little hearts in Pink Teddy Bear again because I just loved the little hearts in that color. Um, so I did that on the sleeve detail and I'm almost like almost there I did my um I I kind of messed up my decreases a little bit um I wasn't going to do them but then I realized I needed to do them for the chart <laughs> the color work chart and so I started doing my decreases a little later on this one um and so it's a little bit of a quicker transition but I also didn't go down to the size that it was supposed to and it fits her great. I actually tried it on her um, after I finished the first sleeve and I think when I block it I will just like stretch the arm just a smidge. Um, I could add a little bit more length to that but it's turned out so cute. Obviously I finished the body. I finished one sleeve and I'm almost done with the second sleeve. Um, I picked up the second sleeve stitches last night and then worked on that for a little while while watching TV. Um, so I'll almost be done with that. Um, I used a 16 inch setup for the body. Oh, these are my interchangeable chow goo needles. Um, and then I'm using my sleeve set, which is the blue chow goo set for the sleeves. So it's just on a nine inch circular and it's been working really well. See, it's the blue set. I don't know if you can see that it's blue, but, um, yeah, I've been, I really enjoy doing nine inch. So I knew the sleeve set when I do sleeves and stuff would be great for that. Um, so that's the Bean and Olive. This is a pattern by Andrea Mowry. And um, I'm just loving how it's turned out. It's so cute. I can't wait to like finish it. Obviously I need to weave in ends <laughs> and um, block it and all that. But it's super cute. Um, her birthday's not until November. So I have time, but I'm not gonna wait that long, obviously. I'm gonna get this finished up maybe even this weekend. And then um, I'll have, actually I'll have, a, I'll probably have these entire two balls left. I bought five balls for, um, these are 50 grams each and I um, only used three of them for the sweater. And I actually will probably have some left over. This one um, I think was, from sleeve one and I just didn't want to reattach a new ball in the middle of a sleeve so I just started a new ball. So I'll probably have a little bit left over. So maybe I'll make her a hat or something that matches. I'm not sure. Um, or I might just stick it in my stash for now and then figure out what to do with it later. But that's whip number one. The second whip you've also seen before. Um, 
but I fixed it. Since last episode, I frogged the entire back panel. Oops, that's a side panel. Hold on. Um, I, I frogged the entire back panel and recrocheted it. Um, I think it goes like, I think it goes like this. So this is the Kima Cardi by Tony of TL Yarn Crafts. I ended up going down a size too, like this. I was knitting the large, extra large size. And then um, when I decided to frog it, I thought it was a little bit too big of a back panel. So I actually went back and did the medium, medium, medium large size. That sounds right, medium large size for the back panel. And I'm leaving the side panels as they are. I think it's fine, they're the same length, so I don't think it'll matter too much. And then now I am working on the sleeves. So it'll be like this. And every once in a while I stick my arm in it. I'm like, that feels so nice. <laughs> it feels so good, it's so fuzzy and warm. Um, so it'll be, it'll be nice when this is all finished up and I get to wear it around the house. Um, for this, I am using Fable Fur. This is also from Knit Picks. It's a super bulky weight and the colorway is Lappin. And I am using a 10, or an N 10 millimeter hook crochet hook with the ergonomic um, gripper, which helps a lot. Um, I'm slowly working on it. I since I finished the back panel, and then I have, this is the sleeve that I have, so I need to continue on this sleeve, finish the other sleeve, and then I'll be completely done. Oh, and sew them all up, and I might, I think in the pattern, oops, I should leave that on top. In the pattern, I think at the end, you go and do like edging, around the front. I might not have enough yarn for that. I'm not really sure. Um, I only have a few, I think I have three balls left after this one. Um, and I'm hoping that maybe it would be enough to like do some edging, but I don't think I'm gonna buy any more to do that if it's not enough, if that makes sense. Um, I've already had to buy more yarn once and otherwise this is going to be a very expensive cardigan and I don't really want that expensive of a cardigan um, for just around the house and stuff so I figure it would be fine if the edges and you honestly can't even really tell um, when I knit an or when I knit when I crochet an edge um, like on these you can't even really tell like where the wrist part is or like where the bottom part is because it has like a little bit of a kind of more of a mock ribbing um, for crochet and then it builds off of that um, and I don't even think you can really tell in this yarn so we'll see I'm playing it by ear so we'll see how that goes okay I have two more whips and these are both brand new whips I am knitting my DK Muscle Burrow hat. This is a pattern by Isolde Deteague, um, and I started the um, Breaking Yarn Fall Muscle Madness um, Cal on Instagram. It started September 1st, and so it's been happening for now a few days. And this is my hat. I finished all of the increases. And then I switched to a 16 inch circular setup. This is also my interchangeable set. Um, and I am using one skein of Swish DK in my new colorway Wayfarer 515 ribbon. It's absolutely amazing. I love it. I love how squishy it is and soft and one skein is enough to knit a hat. So it's not too late to join in on the cowl if you would like to join in. I have, excuse me, I have prizes from Kimber's Cozy Creations, Anna from Zebra Yarns. I have um, a gift from 
um, Danielle of Midwest Stitches, any project bag of your choice, and then also a $50 gift card from my shop at BreakingYarn.com. So if you want to join in, all you have to do is knit a DK Muscle Burrow hat sometime in the month of September. Um, whip photos count too, so if you don't actually finish, that's fine. You'll also be entered to win. Um, you can just post your photos on Instagram and use the hashtag breaking yarn fall muscle madness and you will be automatically entered to win prizes for the cow. So um, that's super exciting. I finished my increases actually in one day and then I took it to the gym with me and did a little bit of um, treadmill knitting. And so now this is kind of going to be a good on-the-go project to take with me. Um, if I have time, I might knit, knit more than one hat in the month of September. And um, we already have one person who finished the hat. It's insane. Um, her name is Anna of Zebra Yards. <laughs> She is a knitting machine. Literally, that girl can knit so fast. She finished her hat in like two days, not even a full two days. She said, because she had messaged me the next morning and was like, I already finished my hat and it's blocking. And I was like, what? Like, how is that even possible? But she's awesome. Um, so she's already working on another one. Um, and there, I guess is a four day, I don't know if it's a four day muscle burrow hat, cal or if it's a four day um just hat cal in general and she's doing a muscle burrow hat for that but she's already knitting her second muscle burrow hat out of breaking princess and it looks so cute um and i'll also show you the hat that she finished already was also swish dk in Wayfair 515 ribbon. It looks so good. I love that color so much. It's crazy. Okay, so I have one more whip. Um, and I was like getting antsy because I was like, I don't really have socks on the needles. Um, and so, and one of the reasons why is because I have a design that I'm working on for Marie, which I'm still not going to show you just yet. I was just retinking it and reworking it um, just this week, and it's not. I haven't. I really haven't had a chance. I'm trying to like finish up these other projects, and then I get crazy and I cast on new ones. Um, but anyways, so I've been antsy to start a pair of socks because I haven't had any on the needles and it's a good on the go project even though now I have a hat too. Um, so I started the Journey, Journey Socks by Margaret of um, Lana and, Lana and, oh, I just forgot it, Heidi and Lana um, and I've been seeing everyone knitting this pair of socks. It's a super like no show pair of socks. Um, and so I was like, well, I'll try it. Um, and it's, um, <laughs> I don't wanna, um, I'm just not sure that it's my favorite sock pattern. Um, I already had to get help from a friend. Thanks, Danielle. Shout out to you, girl, Midwest Stitches. <laughs> Go check out her shop. <laughs> um, I saw that she had knit a pair and we chat um, here and there. So I figured maybe she would, wouldn't mind me asking how to do this next part because you start with the heel flap and the heel turn and then you pick up your gusset stitches and knit those for a while flat. It's super weird. Um, and then I um, I wasn't sure from the instructions how to pick up the gusset stitches. And so I had asked her how to do it. And then I just got really confused because the pattern is written for DPNs only. And I had to like switch it in my brain how to do it on Magic Loop because I don't have DPNs. Um, but now it has me second guessing and maybe I'm thinking Maybe I should go and get some DPN, like a DPN set too, so that I can 
kind of switch around. I've never even done DPNs, but I don't think it looks that difficult. <laughs> that might be a lot. That might be a stretch. I mean, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> maybe it is difficult. It just doesn't look difficult to me, but I'm like, maybe I can try it. Maybe I'll really like it. I don't know. I'm not like the hugest fan, the biggest fan of Magic Loop either. So maybe DPNs would be a little bit more where it's at for me if I can't do nine inch circulars. Um, but anyways, yeah, I was looking for my other nine inch circular. I don't know what happened to it. I've literally looked everywhere. I've looked in every single project bag that I own. I've looked in all my bags. <sighs> I've looked through like where I keep my notion-y things. I even went through my notions and like got rid of some stuff. So I don't know where it is. I'm gonna go um, actually today, this afternoon to the yarn store to pick up some more needles because I just don't know. Um, I just don't know where they're at. And that's kind of frustrating. And I don't wanna be doing this on Magic Loop, which is why it's only right here. I barely connected in the round, like barely, like one round of knitting with it connected in the round. And I'm gonna switch this to a nine inch circular now to finish out this. Um, and I'm using Wayfair 515 ribbon. This is leftover from my division shawl that I knit. And Breaking Delphinium, which is leftover from my mist tee. I saw them hanging on my wall together and I thought that was perfect because the Wayfair 515 kind of mimics this like really light color that comes out of the Breaking Delphinium. And I was like, I could see some socks in that. So I'm not sure, I haven't figured out yet, but I'm, I'm not sure that I'll have enough of the Wayfair 515 to do the whole foot. I was gonna do the foot and then the toe in Breaking Delphinium, but I wanna make sure that I have enough of this yarn to do both socks matching because it kind of like, I'm not, I, I just don't think it's for me to have mismatched socks. Um, just a personal opinion or a personal preference, that's all. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna, like maybe I'll switch to doing striping or something just so I can make this stretch a little bit further. But maybe it's enough to do it too since it's just a small, little sock. I'm not sure. I'm going to figure that one out for sure. But those are my journey socks. My journey sock since I just have one. Um, I have one acquisition to share with you. I got this from Cozy Sky Co on Etsy. I'll link um, their shop down below. But look at this. It's a project bag, of course. It's like a five or six gain project bag, so it's a large one, or like a medium to large one. And I, first off, I love polka dots. And she was doing some fundraiser or something for her kid to go to camp. And I always remember, like, my parents never really had money to pay, just pay for us to go to camp. Like, we always had to raise money and do fundraisers and door-to-door -door <laughs> sales of bracelets and chocolates and all kinds of things to raise money to go to camp. So um, that hits home a little bit for me and I'm like, I wanna help out if I can. And I thought this bag was super cute. After I got it, I realized this little sheep is hand painted. Isn't that so cute? I had no idea. It came with like a little care instruction. It was like, this is like, it's been heat pressed and heat whatever. And then this is how you take care of your bag for the hand painted part. And I went back and looked at the listing. I was like, I didn't even like catch that. Isn't that adorable? Ugh, it's adorable. Um, they have more in their shop too. They had some other styles. And the back is all um, polka dot, gray polka dot. It's so cute. And on the inside, they have a pocket and they have the ring for um, progress keepers and things. So it's a really nice quality bag. And um, yeah, and I'm not sure if they're still raising money for their kid to go to camp or not, 
But um, yeah, I'll link their shop down below in case you want to check out their bags as well. Um, since last episode, I got to go to a party for the Breaking Bad store. They had a little thank you party for all the people who are on consignment over there and their employees. Um, Breaking Yarn is on consignment at Breaking Bad store in Old Town. So if you're ever in town and you want to check out my yarn in person in Albuquerque, go to the Breaking Bad store 100%. Um, we got to go to a thank you party and guess where it was when I got the address I was like What and I like <sighs> Of course I look up things of course on Zillow and whatever I'm just like where are we going so because I can get like a good picture of like where we're driving to because like it's in Placitas and it's a little more like mountainy areas and so when I start looking it up, I was like, this looks really familiar. Like, why does this address look so familiar? And when I looked it up, it dawned on me that it's Don Eladio's house in Breaking Bad. He was like the um, main drug cartel leader in Mexico. And they filmed it at this house in Placitas. And the Breaking Bad store was able to rent the property, I guess, for the party. And it was so cool. Um, I'll put some photos here for you to see. Um, the Mar Mark, one of the owners of the Breaking Bad store, did a dead man float in the pool, like to recreate the scene from Breaking Bad. It was epic, like so good, so fun. Um, the food was amazing. The company was really fun. <laughs> It was nice getting to talk to all the other consignees and even um, Harrison Thomas from Better Call Saul. He's Lyle and Better Call Saul was also at the party. So it was cool to get to talk to him and just like hear their experiences of being on the show and um, just like getting to hear them interact with the other actors on the show. Like it was just really cool. It was a fun evening and um, it was it was a good time. I'm so glad that I was able to go. I um, took my husband as my plus one, so it was it was a fun little date night evening um, for a party. But um, yeah, that's enough about that. If you are not subscribed, please consider subscribing to my channel. Every thumbs up and subscription helps. Um, in the whole algorithm with YouTube. And I just appreciate you so much being here. Thank you for watching and spending a little bit of time with me for episode 42 of the Breaking Yarn podcast. I hope you have a wonderful week. Bye.